Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is having a uh, nice Thursday, good trading day. We'll talk about that uh, in a second. Uh, again, Chinese market, uh, Chinese trade war, uh, on and off, off again, off again, on and on, and on and on and on and on, right? It's been like two years now. Uh, yesterday, 300-point rally in the Dow. Then next thing you know, 30 seconds later after the market closes, or you know, obviously it's exaggerating, uh, China comes out and says, eh, we're not close to the deal. Futures go down, Dow futures go down 350 points instantaneously. Uh, you woke up this morning, you're like, well, I think my, my quotes are off, the futures are green. Yeah, oh yeah, the futures are green because uh, again, the next headline is, well, we're making progress. And then the futures start selling off again, pre-market, and then only to rally back to green, really good, really good aggressive market. And then somewhere right again around two o'clock, right? And that's the unofficial official time to release China headlines. Then they say, well, you know, we, we might be leaving. There's a rumor they might be leaving, uh, you know, off the table, blah, 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 blah. And then 30 minutes later, after the close or 15 minutes after the close, you get a headline from Trump. We're making great progress. So up, down, up, down, up, down. It's all irrelevant. Again, it's, the, it's insane that they are letting these headlines disseminate in the middle of the trading day. Again, free form, right? Freedom of speech. You're allowed to do whatever you want. Anybody can tweet. But again, at some point, the financial markets need to be stabilized by eliminating tweets, the Twitter handles from anybody that can influence the movements of the markets up and down intraday. You want to release a press release, do it after the close. At least anybody in the middle of the day, uh, excuse me, at least anybody overnight already knows there's risk, right? Attached to their positions. So if they something comes out overnight, nobody's going to be shocked uh, that, God forbid, their position goes the wrong way. So again, these tweets are just all over the place. Uh, they really are all over the place. We went from uh, down 300 points last night to up, to down 100, to up 250, to, down, to only up like 60 points in the middle of the day, uh, back to close to the highs of the day. Just absolutely craziness. Uh, and it's challenging, but again, if you are patient... Uh, if you are, if you practice patience, have a have a really really good uh, process, and just be level headed. I, I, again, I, I think that's the name of the game. At, at this juncture, when you know we are a victim to the headline, you know why would you trade extra loose? This is a very very important time to recognize where the value is. The first three four hours of the day will give you um, a very very good advantage, depending how you trade. Again, everybody trades different. Um, and the biggest risk, okay, not only is in a normal market in the afternoons, because again, uh, people are less likely to chase, okay, in the afternoons because people are tired, lost money, whatever the case may be in a normal market. But in this type of environment, if you guys have noticed the biggest example of a, a, a storm, right? Literally a storm of tweets for China comes after two o'clock and you have the really the most aggressive of volatility. And again, I don't want to hear about everybody loves volatility. Yeah, everybody loves volatility until market structure breaks down and things become volatile. Again, I was born at night, but not last night. I've been doing this for 20 years. Most important thing is a structured market. And I think everybody uh, that's been trading for a long, long time will uh, agree with that. Uh, having said that, a pretty solid session. Again, you don't need 60 random stocks. You don't need to be in 12 different trades. We trade the same names, literally. You know, we, you know, we sprinkle in names here and there. But we trade the same names over and over and over again. It's just, again, the familiarity of these stocks is crucial, especially in a very, very uh, disturbing type of a market that becomes so irrational at times that you really need to know what you're trading. You have to be comfortable uh, trading because of the risk. You have to know your exposure, right? Good, bad, or indifferent. And the most important thing is when you are uh, on the right side of the trade and you feel very, very comfortable, you have to know your measure potential. If not, you are trading blind and you combine that with all these irrational headlines and you could be looking at a very, very uh, aggressive situations. If you are a new trader and you're not prepared for the ramifications 
or right, or you feel uh, you feel that this doesn't concern you. Either way, uh, it's not going to end well. Um, again, let's look at it from the technical point of view. Again, we, we made the video last night before that news came out, and we said, look, the market keeps on, at least the market as far as the QQQs, they keep on getting rejected. Okay, off supply, off supply, off supply, off supply. Again, we look like we're about to rally again today, and next thing you know, again, Qs at supply started selling off. Will this latest Headline after the close by Trump, we're getting closer, we're getting things done. Who knows? Again, headlines are headlines. That's great. That's fantastic. But again, you have to play by technical analysis and not the what if game. Okay. And definitely not the prediction game. Again, uh, we don't have a crystal ball. We are not uh, in the guessing game. Uh, very aggressive day. Uh, very, very aggressive day, a day if you knew uh, where to look. Uh, pivots were really good. Uh, really, really good today. Uh, very, very aggressive indeed. I will say, I will say, I'm, I'm embarrassed to say I missed the Netflix move up. Okay. Uh, I missed the Netflix never. I knew they got downgraded today. Okay. I missed that first candle. And once it was up like five off the reversal, I never, I just didn't look at the stock until towards the afternoon. Uh, and I knew 277 was going to be a big number because again, when you look at uh, Netflix 277 here, right? This is the macro area 277. I knew this was a big area. I just thought, especially after the market started selling off and the stock started trading back in the 275s, I kind of thought it was going to be better for tomorrow's session, yada, yada, yada. Tomorrow we'll be paying higher prices. But again, stock looks really, really good. And just again, unfortunately, uh, I missed this. Uh, Tesla was fine. Okay. Tesla was fine. It just kept on getting rejected off the 249 level. Here's the pivot. Uh, 248, 247, 50, 248. Uh, that was the big number. Uh, here's the Tesla pivot. Here's the Tesla pivot. This 248 level. Uh, and again, look how many times it got rejected off this 49, 249, 249. And again, it made it up to like 249 and a quarter. But again, the sellers just got very, very strong, uh, very strong and they defended that 249 area. Uh, you know, I definitely minimized the trade. Uh, it was fine, but again, what could have been, you know, what could have been. Eventually the buyers will clean up those sellers at 249. And I think this thing uh, will test that 253.50 area. It's just a shame I thought it was gonna be today. Uh, but it was okay, you know, the, the trade was uh, the trade was fine. Um, beyond, okay, be, beyond, you know, we've been talking about these, this, this downdraft now for, you know, for every day. I mean, every day it's pivoting lower and every day, this stock is not even, it, it's almost not even tradable anymore, okay? If you think about, uh, what's happening with the stock. It looks like literally from the last headline from McDonald's, right? Like every single day just goes down two, three dollars, right? If you guys notice it's two dollars, two dollars, two dollars, two dollars at one update and literally goes down two, three dollars a day. So I think tomorrow, and this is a big number for tomorrow. Okay. I talked about this today, 37, 137, you know, 137, 50, uh, 136, 137, 136, 50 area went down to like 34 and change. I think they're just going to keep on walking this thing down. I, I, again, it's it's not going up on PRs. It's not going up on upgrades. Uh, I think it's, it's just going to keep on going down, 2 $3 a day. Uh, the big number here technically is 133 That's the low from September the 25th. You have lockup coming up at the end of the month, which is not going to be good. You got like 45 million shares being released. And I, I, again, I think this thing goes lower. I, I, I just don't see what this thing – I don't see why this thing will go higher. I just don't see it. Anything is possible. Another headline could come. But again, if you look at the stock, it's just it's they're walking this thing down uh, every single day. I think the line in the sand will be in the next 24 hours uh, below this 133 level for a possible uh, very exaggerated uh, drop. Uh, 52, right? 52 on MDCO. Congratulations to you guys who took the trade. Nice, you know, nice scalp. Again, it's not a beta name, but a beautiful chart. We had this thing on a watch list for several weeks. It finally, uh, it finally triggered today. 52 went to like 52.60. I still like it going into tomorrow. We'll talk about that uh, in a few minutes. Roku was definitely the trade of the day. So here, here's what I outlined. Uh, here's what I outlined pre-market uh, rising to 60 minute support, which is 116, right? For a potential bounce for experienced traders. But 119 build is important. If it could get there, it could go to 121. Yesterday I screwed up on my execution on Roku. Today we didn't, and it went right to that 21 area. It actually went to uh, the 21 uh, 70s area. And the most ironic part was there was a guy who came in, and here was a 60-minute view. Let me show you guys. So here was a 60-minute view, right? 
118.80, uh, 118.90, so 119 build. And here was supply, right? Here was supply to the 121. So it was a beautiful trade, beautiful trade. Uh, I was very, very happy about it. It's very rare you guys hear me go, and I did that. Uh, so I was very, very happy about the trade. It, it, it broke 119, sat there for like 15, 20 seconds, and then just exploded, just absolutely exploded. The most ironic part about, again, everybody talking about the level playing field was there was um, there was a guy in the middle of the day when the stock was like at 17, right? 117. Uh, he bet 50 grand, okay? Bet 50 grand that the stock was going to go. He, he basically bought the 125 weekly calls, the 125. The stock was at 117. And I said, well, you know, 49 grand. It's not the biggest trade, you know, biggest bet compared to that. You know, compared to I'm sure, sure the size of his account, but I'm saying, well, I was like, well, 50 grand. This guy's betting for a one day rental. Eh, it's very ambitious of the guy. And then you look after after the close, the stock got upgraded, and the stock is trading uh, in the you know basically the 120 area. Again, the level field in the market, guys. That's a bigger myth than uh, you know than than the Loch Ness monster or the Tooth Fairy. It's just it's a joke. It's a complete joke. Uh, ULTA never got to the 235 area. Uh, and I think that's it. I think that's it. I think that's it. And oh, by the way, and again, guys, for all you guys who, who don't trade beta, okay, that's the point of these pivots. You don't need, okay, you absolutely don't need um, to trade pivots to trade us. I, I, excuse me, trade beta to trade us. I try to put, uh, I try to put non-beta names, okay, on the watches. And again, what you guys are looking at for all you guys are joining us the first time, this is. Uh, the private Twitter feed, right? This is the private Twitter feed. This is not obviously the live webinar. This is the private Twitter feed. Everything goes in here. Uh, this is last night's watches again, obviously 264. You saw Tesla, Roku with the biggest move of the day. Uh, beyond uh, GT, uh, GTX, uh, GTHX 2140, um, GTXX 2140. Uh, had a nice little move. It went all the way down to like the 2060s area, again, for $21 stock. Uh, Fran was definitely the biggest trade of the day uh, for all you guys. Again, I wasn't in this thing. It's not really my thing. But again, nobody, again, a pivot is a pivot is a pivot. Nobody needs to hold your hand. Fran, uh, 1555, and this thing exploded. It absolutely exploded. Uh, it went to 1743, so big move there. And obviously, MDCO uh, was on the watch list as well. So a very, uh, very constructive day. Uh, again, for the bulls for tomorrow, and this is kind of how we segue uh, into our watch list for tomorrow. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 vault where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.